Hey everyone, I'm Chris Scott with Fit Recovery. This is going to be a short video about a study that came out last month that I think is significant for anyone who's trying to conquer alcohol, alcohol addiction. And basically what happened is scientists took a bunch of rats from a diverse array of breeds and gave them a choice between sugar water and alcohol. And 85% of them consistently chose the sugar water and 15% of them consistently chose the alcohol. And so this is a, it's kind of significant the way they set this up because a lot of former studies are like the choice between water or alcohol um, rather than the choice between an alternative reward, which sugar is because it is a drug. It does spike dopamine. Um, it's not as powerful as alcohol, but it's still a, a reward substance nonetheless. And so this 15% 15, 15 of all of these rats kept choosing the alcohol. And they even found that after being subjected to shocks, after learning essentially through reinforcement that uh, choosing the alcohol would result in an electric shock, these 15% of rats still chose the alcohol. And even after a bitter taste was added to the alcohol solution, a taste that's very uh, gross, I suppose, to rats, it was added to that alcohol solution, they still chose it. And so here you have rats choosing alcohol despite negative consequences and despite the existence of an alternative reward that is satisfying 85% of the rest of them. But an, an interesting thing is that 15% is actually the same percentage of humans who are dependent on alcohol or who become dependent on alcohol. So the researchers wanted to figure out why this was the case. You know, of course, they started in their f first study. I think they had 32 rats and four of them chose the alcohol. Um, and they were like, all right, maybe this is a um, maybe this is a fluke. But then they replicated it and they found the same thing, you know, over 600 rats later. So what they did was they zeroed in on six different regions of the brain and they found no difference between the rats that chose sugar water and the rats that chose alcohol in uh, five out of the six. And then in one of them, specifically the amygdala and the uh, GABA neurotransmitter system in that, within that brain region, they found massive differences between the sugar water preferring rats and the alcohol preferring rats. And in spe uh, specifically, they found that the rats that chose alcohol actually had 50% less activity in uh, genes that express or genes that uh, are responsible for activating a protein called GAT3. What GAT3 does is it recycles GABA back into the neurons. So effectively the rats uh, who chose alcohol had a malfunction in their GABA system because their GABA uh, recycling pump essentially wasn't working. And uh, that led them for whatever reason, probably complex, scientists are still investigating exactly why a malfunction in that pump uh, leads to uh, a strong preference for alcohol. Um, but they found that to be very, not just a correlation, probably like causation. And so what they did was next, they took the rats that preferred sugar, uh, sugar water to the alcohol, and they engineered them so that they went into their amygdalas and they made it so that they only had 50% functioning in that GAT3 protein. They found that those rats actually would go back out and become dependent on alcohol. They would choose the alcohol instead of the sugar water. Um, and so there you have a, a very, I would say, strong study that points to the GABA neurotransmitter system, specifically in the amygdala, which is known as the emotional center of the brain, uh, as a root cause for alcohol addiction. and something we can essentially turn on and off, at least in rats. Now, human beings are more complex than rats, so that obviously has to be taken into account. But I think it's worth considering that the scientists then uh, exhumed dead people's brains who had been addicted to alcohol and found that they had significantly lower levels of GAT3 in their brains compared to control brains that were examined uh, also from dead people, but dead people who were not dependent on alcohol. And so this GAT3 protein, uh, a deficiency involved with that could be 
the common denominator for uh, alcohol dependence across species. So that's very exciting. And it's exciting to me because it's confirmation of something I've suspected for a while, which is that alcohol addiction really does center around GABA imbalance. And of course, we don't, we don't necessarily know the exact nature of that imbalance and what causes it. Uh, I'm not a neuroscientist, so I don't uh, you know, study all of these calcium gated channels and ions and what's going on in there. But there is hope that scientists will be able to come up with a drug that can uh, increase the uh, effectiveness of that protein, the expression of genes perhaps, that are responsible for activating that protein, thereby curing alcohol addiction. We're not there yet. Um, and honestly, I have a hunch, even though, as I said, I'm not a scientist, I have a feeling that um, maybe the reason that CBD oil worked so well and that stem cell injections worked so well in rats in previous studies, you know, both of those things helped them avoid relapse for a period of months after being uh, injected with them. Um, it could be that they targeted the uh, GABA system in the amygdala. Maybe it had some uh, influence on increasing the efficiency of GAT3 in their brains. Um, maybe that was one of many things that those, that those uh, compounds do in, in the course of reducing brain inflammation, which I think is super important. So, you know, really, I think this study is, it's cool from a standpoint of what are the root causes of addiction. It confirms that alcohol addiction is a biochemical disorder. I think it uh, helps counter the uh, opinion, which is probably still prevailing in most rehabs, that alcohol addiction is the same thing as any other addiction out there, you know, that an addict is an addict. I, I think that's probably not true, as we can see here, at least with alcohol and probably benzodiazepines. Um, it's only the people with a malfunctioning GABA system uh, who experience the intense anxiety and emotional negative chaos that occurs when you cease the alcohol intake or the drinking. And so um, I think all of this leads to you know, the common sense conclusion that we should do what we can to improve and enhance organically our GABA systems. You know, exercise is always a good thing uh, for, for en enhancing relaxation and it probably has some, uh, it has a cascade of very uh, helpful effects in various parts of the brain, including neurogenesis, possibly in the amygdala. Maybe it has some effect on GAT3. I, I think that should be investigated. Um, and also, you know, taking time for yourself, uh, making sure you get enough relaxation, rest, rejuvenation, making sure you get enough sleep, and of course, using basic supplements and uh, nutrient repair, which can also reduce inflammation similar to CBD oil and uh, replenish your brain with the cofactors and uh, enzymes and building blocks that it needs to be optimized. So, you know, I think the big takeaway here is Alcohol addiction is not a vague spiritual defect or a permanent disease, at least in my opinion. I see it as a very specific biochemical disorder that science will eventually resolve. And in the meantime, we just have to do everything that we can to try to optimize our own bodies and brains. I really, the more I think about it, I think you know we can zero in on brain regions and all of that, but there's no real distinction between the body and the brain. Our systems are super complex, and so what's good for the body is good for the brain and vice versa. So that's all I have for this video. Hope you have a great weekend.